I am so excited for spring. It has been snowing in my house for like four days and I am over it. I am ready for spring. I want spring to be here. So I decided that what I was gonna do today is show you a spring makeover and that's what we're doing. We're gonna get to this look right here. I use a lot of drugstore makeup, but I also use the brand new Kosas Revealer Foundation. I will give you my thoughts on that. I've been testing this for oh, uh, probably about four or five days now. I'll give you my thoughts on that. And except for a couple, couple of other things, it's pretty much drugstore in here today so that you, you get to see that. I'm going to pan you out and let you see my shirt right now. I have shown this shirt before on camera, but it was in the teal color. And I think I just did in a very recent vi video show you that. Short sleeve, it wraps around, so it's kind of overlapping, very forgiving on your tummy because it's all ruched. And then it really does make your girls look a little bit higher. It is kind of a polyester material. So if you get really warm, you might not like this material, but I think it's great for this time of year. And I will link my earrings if I can. It, I'm not exactly 100% sure if I can, but if I can find them, I will link them because I did just buy them but they're already going out of stock with a lot of things for spring because they bring it out in January when it's still like five below, but I will link them if I can. So I'm really excited to share this completed look with you. We're gonna go all the way from the base to the lipstick and the mascara. Hopefully you guys enjoy seeing how I did the purple eye because when I did the community tab poll, it was overwhelming response that you guys wanted to see a purple eye. All right, let's get into this tutorial so that you can see this complete spring look. Happy spring, everybody. A few days early, but happy spring. And let's hope for daffodils and tulips really soon. All right, we're gonna get this party started with the ColourPop No Filter Primer. I've really been enjoying this and it really seems to go well underneath a lot of different foundations. It does have that dimethicone feel to it, but it feels very hydrating at the same time. And after it dries down, after you get it on, it really does fill in those pores and really helps even out your skin after you get your foundation on. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some color corrector. This is from Believe Beauty that I am trying to use up. And this uh, brush is a Sephora... Oh, it is a pro concealer brush. I think it says number 71. All of these products will for sure be listed and linked in the description box below so that you can see those. Next is some Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer. This is the best eyeshadow primer. I don't use anything else. You guys know this. Every time that I do my makeup, this is what I'm using. And I just put it onto the lids and then I use that same brush to brush it across. This one, if you get too much on, you could possibly get just a little bit of creasing, but you can also make that problem disappear by next using some powder over top of those eyelids. And that's what I'm gonna do. This is the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. My is in breezy I, th I believe that's the lightest shade if you've not been with me before this is what I do on every tutorial I put powder on my face and over those eyes I try to stay away from the under eye because it does make it a little bit cakey it does give your foundation a longer life that is a trick I learned long ago from Wayne Goss and it has never failed me Next, I'm going in with the Kosas. This is their new revealer foundation. I will say that if you are not a dry to normal skin gal, this is not gonna work. If you're oily, if you have a lot of combo in this area. So this is in color 150 and it's a cool color. It works really good. It is very pale. I would have liked to have done 180 if you're interested in knowing that, but I'm just gonna dot this all over my face. I'm using the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Care Priming Glow Mist. I'm really enjoying this. And it reminds me so much of my beloved MAC Fix Plus that I use every time. I'm also using a new brush that Sigma sent me. And this is a multitasker brush. I think it says F147. If it's different, I'll put it up on the screen. But I'm pretty sure it says that. I spray that brush really well. And then I use that to 
really blend out my makeup. Now, what I will say about this Kosas makeup is it really covers well. I feel like the coverage is so good. Of course, you know, I did just put that powder on, so I get better coverage than you would normally get if you didn't use it. So I would say that it's a medium coverage foundation leaning towards medium full now i wanted to show this to you on camera because i have had a couple of times throughout the day when i felt like it was just kind of settling a little bit in my texture and whatnot so i'm going to put this on and we will see at the end of here what we come up with i'm going to go over it right now with a beauty sponge to kind of push it into my pores the one thing that i kind of am a little bit leery about this foundation is that even though it covers well and it looks beautiful right off the bat, why is there break apart during the day? And then why does it feel like in a few hours you get texture? For me, when you spend this kind of money on a foundation, I want it to be just flawless. I don't want there to be any problems. I don't want to have to baby it. I really don't like this as much as I do the concealer. The concealer is just no fuss. Put it on. You got it. It's not a problem. We're going to go into the Lilac You A Lot palette and the color in here that looks a very light pink. We're going to make this as light and as pretty and as spring like as we can notice I didn't do my concealer I'm gonna wait until after I do all of my eyeshadow and then I'll go in with concealer just in case I get any fallout so we're using this first color as a transition I want it to be a soft spring look um, I love spring makeup it's so much fun after we've had neutrals and dark colors in the winter to just transition over to beautiful spring bright colors and I truly believe that no matter what your age is that you can wear a pretty eye a pretty colors and don't forget to go up towards the tail end of your eyebrow in order to elongate or lift your eye up instead of it drooping down like mine do unless I do this and to make it as simple as possible the all amethyst palette also from ColourPop I'm going to take the middle color right here that is such a pretty pretty purple and so that is going to go on my eyelid and I'm going to just load my finger up big time and I'm going to use that primer spray again and that is going to go across my eyelids now you don't want to get your finger too wet because if you do it's not going to deposit the kind of um, payoff that i like but if you get your finger a little bit too wet you can always deposit the color like what i'm doing right now and then you could go back in and put a little bit more of the color on the lid oh my word this is so pretty that is such a pretty color. I love that. All right, I want to do just a little bit of deepening. I don't want it to get too deep though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this color down here, which is a darker color in the palette, but I'm going to mix it with that medium pink that they have in here. So I'm going to kind of just tap that off. By the way, this is my favorite brush for doing the outer part of your eye. It's a BK Beauty 205 brush that has an angle and they call it their contour brush. I love it. It is so easy. So basically all I do is I lay it down in the corner of my eye. I wiggle it around, push the corner in there just a little bit towards the eyeshadow that we just put on. And then I'm going to turn it towards the tail of the brow and I'm going to push it towards the tail of the brow. And then I'm going to turn it again and I'm just going to create the crease. So it's super easy to do this. Just use a light hand go a little bit slower and you're going to have that just almost immediately blend perfectly i'm going to go back with the original brush by the way that is a refer 15 brush that i really like and i'm just going to really pull that look out towards the tail of the brow and lighten it up a little bit more all right, I'm going to go in with my Kosas Concealer. This is 2.5, and I am going to put just a couple of dots on here. So I'm going to cover this area, but I'm not going to blend it in. So I'm just patting it to move it around and cover the area really good, and then I'm going to let it sit. Now, while that's sitting, before I blend it in, I'm going to go ahead and do my eyebrows. I gotta love you if I do my eyebrows on camera. First of all, I'm gonna put this bully through them and just push them upward. 
And then I'm going to show you what I've been doing lately. I have been taking any sort of an eyebrow gel. This one is the e.l.f. Wow Brow. It has little fibers in it. I like it for that. I also like the Ulta one. So I'm going to go in and I am going to try and catch every hair that I possibly can with the gel. So this is the first part. Everybody, my hands shake. I have a palsy. It's a disability. I work around. Like I said, if I show you that I do my brows, I gotta love you. So that's because I'm very self-conscious about this and I know I shouldn't be and you've all been absolutely lovely about knowing that I have this and not saying anything. Then what I'll do after that is I'll go in with any sort of a pencil. This is the NYX Micro Brow and I believe mine is in ash brown. I think that's the color that I normally wear. All these colors, like I said, they will be down below. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to paint in and make thicker all of this mess that I've just done with the actual gel. So I'm just going to, first of all, make the line underneath. Don't bring your eyebrow down at all. Go out as far as you want to, push that tail out. The farther you push the tail out, the more your eyes are going to look lifted, but make sure that you don't bring the tail down because if you do, you're gonna get that droopy look to your eye again. And then I'm going to paint in here at the inside a little bit more because I want there to be some definition and I want the brow to go a little bit more inward. I don't want them to go too far inward because then you look angry. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to paint until I get a little bit of an arch out here. Just a little one. and then paint that in. The running joke on my channel is my eyebrows are not twins. They're not sisters. They might be super distant cousins, maybe twice or three times removed. They might even be strangers. The problem is, is that eyebrows are not asymmetrical normally. So just go with it. Just love your eyebrows no matter what you got. I've seen some eyebrows that were crazy and the women were beautiful anyway. Who cares? It's just an eyebrow. It washes off at the end of the day. Take a dampened beauty sponge, take the point of it, and I'm gonna go in now and I'm going to completely blend in all of that concealer. And I'm gonna take it towards the end of my eye look right here to create more of a lifted look and clean that up as I go. And it's gonna come all the way to the inside as well. Once I do that, I'm gonna take a powder puff and that setting powder. And I'm gonna set those under eyes right away with a tiny bit. I just touch it like twice and push it in because I really don't like powder under the eyes, but let's face it, as it becomes spring and summer, if you have allergies or, you know, it gets warm, you start to sweat, it's definitely going to crease those under eyes. But if you get too much powder on there, you're going to look like the Crypt Keeper and you don't want to do that. So I set all of these places that I know is going to be a little bit problematic for me and going to have some breakthrough. And the Kosas powder is beautiful for that. One of the best brushes that Sigma ever made is the E30. I love this pencil brush. It is awesome. I'm going to go down into the lightest color and I'm going to mix it with that pink right there to give my inner corner color and really like this. Make sure you tap that off and then just go right down into that inner corner. Hopefully you guys can see. And then I'm going to blend that with the color that is on my eyelid to kind of lighten everything up, bring everything together. All right, well now what? We don't wanna go too crazy on the bottom because we've already been real crazy on the top. I'm gonna to take this color right here, which is the lightest color in the whole palette. I hope I haven't been holding this down so you couldn't see it the whole time, but we'll work with it. Okay, so I'm taking that lightest color on that pencil brush. Now all I'm gonna do is just stick to the outer part of my eye and give this eye look a little bit of contour underneath. Let me tell you what I think about contour underneath the eye. If you don't like it, don't do it. However, I do feel like when I don't do it and I don't do a little bit of mascara on the bottom of my eye, it actually makes my eye look a little bit smaller, which I know is kind of counterintuitive to what so many people say, but I like a little bit of liner on my bottom line. I just think that it looks 
polished and butter. I, you know, it's one of those things, I guess maybe it is just your personal preference. Do what you love. That's what I always, always say, right? The Contouring Duo Palette from Essence, and this is in the one for lighter skin. And as you all know, I do the high forehead thing where I go right up to my hairline, deposit that. Yep, I do it dark because I like it to blend in with my hairline uh, and my hair is darker at the roots. Are all of our hairs darker at the roots? I'm not a natural blonde. Don't tell anybody. But you want to make sure that you, if you have a really high forehead, you're blending with the roots so that the makeup will look a little bit more seamless. Okay, now when I go to do my cheeks, I'm gonna pinch that brush because it's not quite as thin as I want it to be. And I'm gonna lay down the line where I want my contour to be. Try to go a little bit higher than you even think that line is or where you think that line should be. And then I'm going to do the same thing right down here on my gels, on my double chin. And then I'm gonna start to blend and I'm gonna start to make my voice go like this. Anyway, I'm going to make sure that my neck looks more elongated because of how I'm contouring it. And then as I go into the side right here, I'm just gonna push it up toward the cheek, not pushing it down as I blend, because if I do that, then it's going to make this look muddy out here instead of a contoured look. And just blend until you feel like it looks blended a lot, not like it looks like you have a bunch of contour there. If you have got a very light foundation like I did today, I have found that a more youthful look looks bronzed. So I will go ahead and I will bring this down on my forehead a bit, and I'll even go across my forehead a little bit. It helps to set the makeup. If you're a mature woman and you love the look of highlighter, but you're like, it shows up my texture, I'm sorry, I can't use it. Always do your highlighter before your blush. It really doesn't show up any texture and you can still wear your beautiful highlighter without showing any texture at all on your mature skin. Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter Duo. One side is lightning dust and the other side is fire crystal. I'm going to stay in lightning dust because it's just a tiny bit more of a a softer glow, whereas the other side is really, really high beam. Dolce Pink in Milani's Baked Blushes, one of my favorite colors. Gonna go so well with this look today. And I'm just gonna load that brush. Kinda wanna just stay a little bit lighter on that blush. However, when I'm on camera, everything looks a tiny bit washed out. So I'm gonna use a little bit more than I would if I was in real life with you. Okay, looking super glowy. I am going to take a little bit more powder and I'm gonna powder down right here where I look really glowy. Right there, just a little bit. And maybe on my chin. Now I'm gonna go in, this is also the new ColourPop No Filter Setting Spray. It does have a bit of a residue in the bottom. I don't know what that is, but this is not a drying setting spray. I don't believe it has any alcohol in it. But so I do give this a really good shake each time that I use it. I like this sprayer on this. One of my pet peeves is a sprayer that spits at you. It's not a super fine mist, but it does come out okay and it doesn't have a bunch of droplets on it. And then I'm gonna go back over and just pat everything because what that does, it's gonna make everything just melt together and look so pretty. All right, in keeping with the theme of spring and pretty, we are going to be using the Maybelline Color Sensational. This one is in the color Dusty Rose. That's the liner. Pretty color. I really like the color. It's kind of a almost like a almost like a medium rose. Now I want to show you as I'm looking at this, that coast has settled a little bit. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I'm already noticing just a little bit of that texture I was talking about. So, you know, the jury is so out on this still. I have worn it like maybe four times, five times. Each time I get that. And I don't want to spend the kind of money that I spent on this foundation and not get beautiful from it. But the concealer, you can't go wrong with the concealer. It's actually my ride or die. So let me go ahead and just line these lips. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm going to be using the NYX lip gloss. These are saturated lip glosses. Well, some of them are. This one is vanilla cream pie. I'm going to be using that as my color today because it's such a bright, pretty color and it still gives the gloss. I just love it. So keeping the lips a little bit understated, but a little bit brighter at the same time. Gonna go in, do my mascara, be right back. If you're wondering what I used for mascara, it is two of them. The Maybelline Full and Soft Mascara, I have been loving for volume. And then of course, I have used for a couple of years now, the Essence 24 Ever Bold Volume Mascara, super lengthening, super pretty, and really helps to lengthen those eyelashes so much. That's a finished look. I hope that you do enjoy it. Let me get pretty close so you can see the eyes and everything there. I really am in in love with this spring look. First of all, I am not absolutely in love with the Kosas Revealer Foundation. It just, it's let me down too many times. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, yes, this is the best foundation, go out and buy it. It's too expensive for that. But I will tell you that the Kosas Revealer Concealer and the Cloud Set Powders are two of my very, very favorite things from them. They did just a fantastic job. I am absolutely in love with this new palette from ColourPop. I really like it. And I really like how it did this eye look. So I went in and I did my hair, fluffed it a little bit, brought it down, and I put on some new fun earrings that I will link if I can. Go ahead and let me know in the comments section what you thought, what your favorite colors are to wear in the spring if you change it up to maybe lighter colors and just use your regular colors or do you like to use a brighter color as you're going into spring? Let me know that. I'd love to hear from you and any products that you think that I might need to try. You know, I'm always wanting to try new products. Thanks so much for being with me. I love you all very much. Let's all meet back here in my next video. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye, my friends. <laughs>